Hello guys, uh, September 26th uh, Hindu editorial. So you can see some AI images behind me. These are all uh, the photos of cricketers uh, in their childhood, how they would have looked uh, through AI, uh, you create images. And like this, there are many in the internet uh, going around. So just as an interaction sake, if you want, you can try to identify them and tell me in comment section in the right order. Okay, like one, two, three, these are the people uh, you feel this looks like them. Okay, so these are the AI images. Why we are discussing this today? Because today's Hindu editorial has uh, uh, the discussion on AI and child rights. Okay, AI already we have discussed whether AI will replace humans in the jobs and all and that time I told you AI will not replace humans but AI will replace those humans who don't know about AI meaning AI is the future now okay chat GPT and all you would have seen generative text you tell it's not even type nowadays you can ask something to it and it identifies it and then it responds in a 300 word essay okay it knows everything that much data is fed into that uh, thing that it is becoming more and more powerful each day and many many people are making like a, a competitive apps also for that and the future is going to be ai so you should not be out of the race you should be knowing when technology is evolving at least now follow the current affairs and news and see at least what is happening okay it's not like that bitcoin time when like you know it or you don't know it it's okay bitcoin and cryptocurrency everybody did not take interest many of you don't know it that is okay but ai is going to be like the next google kind of thing so everybody uh, will need it it will it is it is going to come in your devices and everywhere it is going to come so you should know generative text and what is the power of power of that what is the disadvantage of that so today is focusing on child rights child photos and all how you are misusing like you could have seen this is like very easy to identify like who is this and like that child uh, photos people are using now in social media also including you many people would have done that uh, to make you look better you are using this ai apps and making your photo look like slimmer fairer more fitter you are shape you are in shape okay not out of figure that this this complex is there within people that you want to make yourself look good okay it's not now filters it is the ai now which is making the artificial face for you okay so like this everyone including celebrities pictures and everywhere you would see this even celebrities are uploading that just like a fun post they're uploading see my ai figure like that they are all posting it so this and all you should understand that the one which can make you look younger can also make you look older also okay people can misuse it and most of the ai pictures and videos nowadays which comes out it looks so real Okay, not the cartoonish type, it is looking more real that it can be misused also. The children's data or any uh, sexual victims data, anything can be misused. So this is a very powerful, dangerous thing. Elon Musk himself have told AI is very, very dangerous. So you have to be cautious. Every government has to be cautious when you make rules and regulations regarding that. So this is one important thing because children are the ones who is more using the uh, apps and phones now more than parents so they should be uh, taken care okay that is the agenda that we'll discuss when the article comes so here if you take uh, today's hindu what are the important uh, editorials to discuss okay the first one i told you the ai summit india is going to host two important summits uh, uh, this year that is again a reason for uh, discussion today so that uh, we'll see okay including some international laws regarding ai and child rights uh, we'll uh, discuss that okay then here g20 outcome g20 many articles we have discussed and outcomes daily declaration everybody gave consensus that also we know but the author is telling that also and beyond that some extra points about alignment and non-alignment also so i felt it interesting so that we'll discuss in detail okay then we have this armenia azerbaijan okay armenia azerbaijan is fighting since the 70s 80s 90s and it's going on even today as we speak it is getting more and more serious so that everybody's attention went to russia ukraine but azerbaijan armenia is very very important even upsc prelims question came this year regarding that so that is why we will discuss this also in detail okay so three articles to discuss this one is the kaveri bangalore band today i am also in bangalore bangalore it is completely a band but it doesn't mean it is shut down because bangalore is a metropolitan city whatever even all india band happens here people go to work and still things happen shops are open vehicles are running but little bit reduced it is okay because it is an issue of water drinking water literally here to be frank here also water shortage is there in our building the underground kaveri water is not there from because the monsoons were very less this time monsoon hit kerala it went above gujarat and everywhere but the southwest monsoon did not give proper rain to uh, karnataka this time okay to tell about kaveri river it starts from karnataka and it goes through uh, Tamil Nadu okay and then ends in the uh, uh, Bay of Bengal there so Tamil Nadu is also dependent for their irrigation purposes okay so because they do a lot of agriculture there they depend on this Kaveri water but uh, the problem is this time monsoon was so, so less that uh, the water itself is less the dams are all empty so what happened is we have a Kaveri tribunal which already told that this much this much water should be given and Karnataka is actually giving it in spite of the trouble here they are still giving the water to Tamil Nadu so the people are not liking the organizations here or the politicians or whoever is there they are all protesting today to tell that in times of crisis you keep away the tribunal decision and all you take care of the people first 
so uh, counter to that tamil nadu is also shouting then they are also fighting so both are fighting with each other okay so these uh, whoever is controlling the protest you know it will be politicians it will be organizations it will be many things so it can go violent also and it's not over with one day 26 today is bangalore band friday 29th is going to be uh, all karnataka band okay it will be even more serious okay so more things will be shut off shut down and these things and all because water is not there here actually literally i am telling here uh, tanker lorries are coming and that's how we are also getting water okay every day two two tanker is coming here for the full building i'm telling so like that uh, water shortage is a big issue many states are fighting for that and now presently it is this issue okay the reason karnataka is telling is that now we need to little bit reduce it because tamil nadu is anyway going to get rains in the northeast monsoons if you know the geography the monsoon south the mon west monsoon goes hits the himalayas and comes back when it comes back november december january time tamil nadu gets its rain so they are anyway going to get rain but karnataka has missed this time southwest monsoon and so it may not get water in the next 6 to 8 months it has to adjust with what is there so that is why the fight is even more crucial so we'll see in the coming days how it is going on whether in new sharing agreement they'll bring in or something will happen because else it will be very serious uh, problem okay so three, uh, one article is kaveri uh, bangalore band i told you three we will discuss this side is women's bill i told you reservation reservation of women 33 percentage doesn't mean tomorrow itself will get implemented because the election date is already done 2024 you have the uh, general election for which already you know mp's party everybody would have decided who will stand for election where all places now if you have to give 33 percentage women mp now that you cannot do now first you have to do the census of the country okay the full population you have to know how much women how much man everything is there then after that you have to do something called delimitation that is once you get okay this much crore people are there in particularly one state this much crore like, suppose 5 crore people is there in kerala from there then you have to do division of constituency okay it's not based on district and all it's based on area okay this much this much okay block and then for this block one mla for this block one mla corresponding to that mp so like that you have to decide that for that delimitation has to happen currently delimitation is already frozen till 2026 okay already it is till 2026 it is uh, frozen it is decided this much is there so next election is when next election 2029 so after the 2024 election census will happen delimitation will happen and then by 2029 hopefully we will know which all areas women mp will be given okay that also again one problem is there whether you decide okay this many this many constituency is going to be permanently women or on rotation basis like okay for 2029 election these places women mp uh, and the next election 2034 or something that time women mp in another election in another constituency that is also flexible thing or permanent thing is one debate or other suggestion is that same place have two mps one women mp and one male mp okay that is also one suggestion but that problem is then you will have many number of mps it will they will not fit in the current parliament system okay already it is 600 700 people are there sitting there so if you again double the number of mps it will again be problem so like that this full thing it will take time and by 2029 election hopefully 33 percentage women will be there in Uh, center in the parliament as well as in all the state assemblies this is the thing but every author is writing their own stories it will never end so you don't have to read it every day this is the gist of it okay here manipur local news we don't have to read here it is a continuation of that only children using apps at least 30 percent of the time or at least uh, three hour four hour they are an app entertainment app social media app movie streaming games they are into this so their ai things we have to protect that we'll discuss in the article okay So G20, China is not happy. That why China is not happy. That we'll discuss. Armenia, Azerbaijan, all the maps I'll explain. So if you are very serious, okay, if you are very serious about UPSC, the editorials alone will not suffice. Editorial will give you these stories and main answers and all prelims, pointer factors, the MCQ, how it will look like, how to tackle the options that you will learn from my test series. So that test series in current affair packs it's already open. Other packages also will open soon. The subject ones, current affairs, you can enroll to any pack which you like. there is individual packs there is combo packs and many more things are going to come okay and for any updates come and join my whatsapp link okay whatsapp come and ask in this number i will add you to a channel link also and my status daily you can see in my status i give all the updates okay whenever we are going to launch a new batch any classes coming everything will be there in the status itself so just follow my whatsapp you will get all the information okay so whatsapp number please note it down because every time i cannot come and tell the same thing in youtube okay So first we will see the G20 uh, article. India, you know, has a great success after this uh, thing. Everybody, the full world is appreciating India because of the main thing called Delhi Declaration, New Delhi Declaration. Usually after every G20 summit, in the name of the host country, uh, in the place, city which happened, there will be a declaration done. 
meaning there's like hundreds of pages and paragraphs where you have written every kind of issue like climate change and this thing and that thing everything okay so we were able to make it like consensus consensus doesn't mean majority meaning if 20 people are there it's not like you get 15 votes and then okay it's passed it's not like that consensus means all the 20 of them agreed so this time it is a very great success because last time the bali consensus right the bali thing indonesia when it happened everybody did not agree Russia, China opposed it. India also was remaining neutral because their drafting, they did it in a way that they blamed Russia for the war and they sidelined Russia. So obviously Russia will not support, China will not support. So consensus was not there in the Bali one. Bali was actually accusatory or a harsh one. Okay, but India's is a much more resolution type. Meaning India has wrote it in such a way that there is war, we should bring mediation, we should bring peace. Both sides have its own fault. We should try to bring them to the same table. So in a very polite way, in a peaceful way, India has written very beautifully. So that is why everybody agreed to it. Okay. So West agreed to climb down. West agreed to climb down from the demand not to point fingers at Russia. Okay. What they did in Indonesia, here it did not happen because India has convinced everyone very beautifully with their uh, soft skills and you know, SJ Shankar is there, uh, Modi is there, Niti Ayog, Savar, Amitabh Kant is there. Everybody are excellent orators and speech and these things. And all. They know how to convince someone of something and they brought everybody on the same table and including China, Russia, USA, every country, including the Canada who is uh, fighting with us now, everybody agreed to this. So Delhi consensus was a huge successful. It had renewable energy capacity, climate issue, terrorism fighting, lifestyle for sustainable development, reform for multi-development banks, then uh, our own uh, this UPI, digital public infrastructure, which was asked in this year's prelims. Then uh, everything, whatever is there, G20's people's current mood, what is there, that all was taken care and it was well drafted and the Modi's uh, dictum of one earth, one family, one future, actually you saw their life when everybody gave consensus. Okay, including entire African people, everyone supported India because African Union is part of this because of India's involvement. Okay, few months back in BRICS also, Egypt and Ethiopia was added to BRICS country. So, Africa is fully happy. The Middle East is fully happy. Everybody are happy with India and everybody, even now Canada's issue, today one video came out where the Pentagon one officer in USA, he told, he is actually shouting at Canada, telling like, what do you think by challenging the strongest democracy in the world? If there is a choice given to us, USA, that we have to choose between India and Canada, don't think we will choose Canada because we are friends since long time. We will choose India because India is strategically important to us. The video is there on Instagram. Okay. So that way, everybody knows the value of India now because of the geopolitical reasons, the position which India is there in the world. Okay. Strategically, economically, geographically. So everybody are happy. Okay. So the first page of this uh, Editorial is doing like this only hopes uh, doing this only hope and wishes of the uh, global community is taken care almost 100 issues in the agenda was given consensus. Okay, now in a little bit of a G20 history they are telling India is the founder member of G20 when it was formed in 1999. And that time when it was formed, it is not like the, all the prime ministers and presidents used to come. That time it was just a meeting of finance ministers and the central bank governors. Okay, you should know that uh, it was just a group 2020 uh, sorry G20. Parallelly, there was a G7 group where the seven big powers of developed countries were there. So they, what happened is in 2008, what happened? The world recession came, world economic crisis. So they understood we seven alone cannot decide things. We need to involve everyone. So they made G20 like the G7, meaning all the presidents and prime minister, meaning summit level thing up, uh, upgraded in 2008. Okay. Before that, as I told, when it was the finance ministers group, that time also India had hosted G20 once. Okay. But that time, as I told, it's only finance minister. So in 2002, India has hosted G20 meeting. Okay. In 2023, again, India has hosted G20, but the summit level, bigger one. Okay. So now India is among the top leaders of the world and everybody, India's voice is heard now and everything is fine. But now comes the China problem. Okay. So China welcomed the Delhi declaration. Okay. Xi Jinping, he did, did not come to India, but whoever came, they gave consensus and they were okay. They told, okay, you're building corridor, you're building global biofuel alliance, everything fine. You do everything is good for the world. But Remember why you made G20? G20 was made because G7 people could not handle the economic problems and also we made this group for economic cooperation and discussion. Don't turn G20 into a geopolitical tool where you are showing all your geopolitics and political games and war and this thing and you are showing all those things. Don't use that. Okay, this is what China is telling. So, China gave a warning that it should not be a geopolitical tool. China's perception is that G20 was being used by the West solely to uh, make their agenda on everyone, okay, impose their agenda on everyone. So, a few other world leaders also, not just China, did not give a thumbs up fully to Delhi, Delhi G20, that is South Korea. 
South Korea also told this world is having these many crises, poly crisis, lot of geopolitical competition, there is inflation, there is oil issue, uh, Ukraine is in trouble. So many things are there. So India has to be cautious that everybody who gave consensus now also later can speak against you also. So you should see the situation in the globe and reform accordingly. Don't sit with this G20 success forever. Okay. So China remains a dominant power in Asia. Everybody knows that also. So uh, the author is telling uh, many things are being done to counter China, like West is coming and then doing Indo-Pacific strategy. You are adding many countries to BRICS, you are adding many countries to Quad and you are doing uh, many things with the ASEAN group. Many things you are doing to show your anti-China stance, okay, by giving membership and all these things. But you should, don't forget that China's capacity, okay, China's capacity to come back from everything, okay, whether it is debt deflation, demographic decline, that is their population, youth population is ending, they will have problems. But China will come back stronger. China has already proven to the world that from nowhere, it has come to the kind of second biggest economic power after USA. So they just don't take them lightly, okay, they have problems now but they will come back stronger. They will again have the strong manufacturing base they have. Their population will again come. Everything they will do. Okay, so you have to be uh, careful of that. And West now who is supporting India cannot be believed all the time. West will only look their advantage always. Okay, they wherever they have gone, Afghanistan, Iraq, Kuwait, wherever they have gone, Korea, Vietnam, they have spoiled that place only. USA, Russia, wherever have gone, they have spoiled that country. Okay, so that is why you should not become a pet of uh, USA also, but you should again choose sides also that will come. Uh, the last will come about that. So now, uh, character of G20 has been changing. As I told, the economic thing is changing to a geopolitical one. So that also you have to take care. And now the two blocks, alignment, non-alignment issue, which we had after independence also, we know that time we did not know where to choose. So we don't want to go to USA, we don't want to go to Russia or the USSR that time. And so we chose non-alignment, like we, Egypt, Yugoslavia, four or five countries, Indonesia, we decided we are like a NAM group, non-alignment group, we won't take sides. Author is telling now also there is two groups. Okay, don't think that the uh, bipolar world became a multipolar world. Now also there are two groups. One is the uh, one led by the West, Okay, which can be USA, NATO and all those Western European countries. Other is by China and Russia, which includes even North Korea and all. Okay, so both are doing their sides and many countries are taking sides. Don't think like everybody is neutral like India. Everybody are taking sides. Okay, for example, they are telling Japan and uh, uh, South Korea already is fully supporting USA. Australia is a key partner in all the alliances where USA is doing, whether it is Quad, whether it is Indo-Pacific, whether it is military exercise, Malabar exercise, everywhere Australia is going and joining uh, USA only. Same side, uh, same time, other side also, Russia, China also is also bringing North Korea. They are meeting, the presidents and uh, leaders are meeting with each other. They are doing many things. Okay, Europe, if you see, it's like half-half. Example, Turkey, or now it is Turkey, the name, the Turkey is a part of NATO which is ideally USA side, but Turkey is having very like full fledged meeting with Russia, Putin, Moscow, they are having like very good friendship. Okay, so like that, if you see the, the this Erdogan, he is uh, Turkey's leader, he is meeting Putin, they are having meetings. Okay, China is uh, doing everything which they can do to get more and more hold in the Asia, uh, sorry, ASEAN region, Indo-Pacific region. So, sides are very strong in both sides even africa which you debate like whether usa side or whether it's uh, this side both are get uh, like both sides they are getting funding including india they're getting funding they're getting free rice if you see subsidized rice even for free russia is giving to the africa so everybody will once decide where to go okay so india also should not think like we keep telling ourselves neutral it looks more uh, fake also okay that thing is like now dramatically shrunk you cannot tell you are not aligned to anyone you should choose side that is what the author is suggesting okay the so strengthening of rival camps holding divergent visions of the international order the world com confronts a dismal future okay world is having a very uh, uh, not a very bright future okay so this line itself upsc can put and tell justify that time this is what you have to write the two sides and the new modern day bipolar world and all so this you have to tell and india's position also you have to tell so now uh, as i told the glitz around uh, g20 success that is fine the references by global south global south you know the leaders african leaders everybody are praising india so this all will happen but india done all hard work fine but you should not be such person in the international politics that your voice is uh, getting suppressed or you uh, keep telling I am neutral, neutral, neutral and that will backfire at you. You should sometimes take sides also and your voice should be heard by people and it should be decisive also because India now has a voice. When India tells many countries listen, so you should be able to become that powerful place because as per historically if you see only those who have taken sides have become superpowers. 
those who kept telling neutral have always remained neutral and always have remained developing countries if you have to become that number one power you also have to be a side okay maybe a tripolar world where india is one side and then uh, usa and russia is in two other sides so like that you have to become one strong pole that is what the author is suggesting now the second article armenia azerbaijan so for your prelims uh, two things one is this nagorno karabakh area which they are fighting it's a small landlocked area if you see between uh, azerbaijan and armenia in actual map it is in azerbaijan legally it is with azerbaijan okay but the people there are fully armenia meaning armenian people are controlling that territory even though the map it is inside azerbaijan okay same like we have israel palestine issue we have india pakistan the kashmir issue is kind of that okay one place is debated so in this also there is a small corridor which is lachin corridor which upsc will ask as per me i think it will come in the exam okay lachin corridor is a corridor through which the people can escape to armenia meaning there are many armenian people living there so during war time and all lakhs of people through that corridor they go in back to their country okay so that corridor this azerbaijan is halting sometimes and all and so people are stuck in the mountainous areas it's full mountain areas okay that you should know again the caucasus mount caucasus mountain greater and the lesser caucasus mountain is here so that mean the area above azerbaijan and this thing is called the north caucasus okay i'll show you another one more map one minute see this is north caucasus and this full area where these countries are there this is the south caucasus okay so this area if upsc ask where is it it is the area between black sea and caspian sea the caucasus area is between black sea and caspian sea so the city names and all is important this tbilisi is the capital of georgia yerevan is capital of armenia baku is capital of azerbaijan okay this some city names whatever is there you have to note down because war time every city comes in news and upsc puts very difficult maths the following nowadays simply four city names they will give and four country names they will give they expect you to remember this so you have no other option when we teach you something you have to know okay whatever city names you pause and take screenshots or do whatever but you have to know every single place which is mentioned here other than that you have to know like what are the bordering countries of armenia what are the bordering countries of azerbaijan what are the bordering countries of caspian and black sea which both are asked already by upsc okay then here if you see a little more zoomed in there is a lake lake savan then again some zeravan is there baku is here georgia russia iran is here so turkey is here turkey also has border with armenia so every kind of map you have to study because five six questions directly comes from map nowadays okay that to current affair map not your textbook maps in news what is there that location will be asked so now if you take the uh, issue okay the causes of this conflict nagar uh, nagarno this thing conflict territorial reasons are there cultural identity problem is there religious is there domestic politics is there domestic politics means the political leaders for power they will be fighting that is common territory as i told geographically this area is in the control of ethnic armenian okay even though in the map as i told it is in azerbaijan it is controlled by ethnic armenian people 95% of this population feel that this is our area this is our land and azerbaijan people should leave it for us culturally also due to armenia the identity and demographic makeup of the region have altered making this a disputed area and then 1.5 azerbaijani muslims were compelled to move to other areas so these people make uh, azerbaijani people go there they make these people go there religion wise if you take armenia is christian okay this in the map not this one this is christian area this is muslim area if you see whether like where each country is standing most of the countries have taken neutral stand india is supporting armenia why because azerbaijan in every voting in every united nations thing they always support pakistan they always tell kashmir is part of pakistan so obviously india will never support them so india is supporting armenia to a little extent okay whether it is a little bit funding little bit of military equipment everything india is supporting armenia okay you need to know india stand mainly so religious reasons uh, cultural reasons territorial everything is happening now strategically why is they are they fighting it's not always religion always there will be hidden economic reason also so caucasus i told you it's between black sea and caspian sea there are several gas and oil pipelines there okay so it's an energy rich area so from there to turkey to europe to western areas everywhere the oil pipelines are going on and both wants to control it okay so you can see many uh, western route uh, export pipeline trans antolian gas pipeline south caucasus pipeline baku tbilisi sehan oil pipeline all these are in that area so that is why people want to control okay the energy supplies will get affected if they are keeping on fighting it will affect the energy supply in the full world also already russia ukraine fight is causing many losses to the world so background of this if you take okay background of this is this is a landlocked area populated mainly by ethnic armenians and earlier it was part of the big russian empire in the 1914 world history which you study russian empire this was part of that this area nagorno that's uh, that uh, disputed area then it went to soviet union okay in 1921 soviet union after that 
Soviet Union, what they did is they made this area as an autonomous region, meaning little bit rights and independence they gave to Azerbaijan. They named it like Azerbaijan so Soviet Socialist Republic. The Azerbaijan region got this area. Okay. But people living there are Armenians. So obviously fight will happen. This created tensions between the communities. And by 1980s, the Soviet Union began to weaken. You know, by 1991, they will break also. They will become Russia and another 15, 16 countries. So that time, these people decided to do voting there, referendum kind of thing. And many region voted that we don't want to be part of Azerbaijan Union. We want to become part of Armenia Union. So Azerbaijan resisted. So 80s, 90s, they fought. Then uh, Soviet Union broke. It became Russia. Okay, that time Nagorno Karabakh, they declared independence and became a third country itself. Okay, so Armenia, Azerbaijan and a third independent unit it became. Okay, so still those two are fighting. Still those two are fighting like who will control this. Then Armenia supported them. Okay, this Nagorno thing, whenever any conflict is there. So they also, because they also want to join this area side only if, if they are asked to choose a side. 1994, the Armenian forces gained control of the area and surrounding Azeri territories also. And a ceasefire was declared, meaning stop fighting. Same like India, Kashmir happened, stop fighting happened. But Kashmir's, you know, our side, some little side went to Pakistan because we stopped the... Same like that here, it went to uh, Armenia, but fight stopped. But these people still is following the old one, which uh, Russia did, part of Azerbaijan. Nagorno is part of Azerbaijan. So that reason, people are fighting and through Lachin Corridor, people are going on. Now, anybody tried to solve this issue, there is an OSCE Minsk group. Okay. So that means OSC group and all I've already told in previous videos, please watch it. Russia, USA, France tried to become mediators and tried to solve it. But till now, not even a single talk has become successful. They are still fighting. Okay. And Russia is nowhere in position to become a mediator. They themselves are fighting there. So this will obviously not become successful. But like this, many other groups are also there. There is a CTSO also, collective uh, TSO. Okay. That you try to find out what is this. Okay. Security organization. So that CTSO, what is this OSCE? This and all, if you don't know, that means you are not watching my daily editorials. I have taught you all this in detail with like, like when it started, who are the members, whether India is part of it. Everything is done. So please take Vaishaya's video seriously. You will get full marks in your prelims and mains. Okay, it's my guarantee. If you watch my foundation, editorial and daily lectures, you will ideally pass. But take it seriously. Okay, now for the last article, the AI and child right. So children are the most vulnerable. They are always uh, uh, being uh, using these apps and all. And so they can be targeted. And the jobs I already told you, jobs will not be replaced just like that. The humans who don't know AI, who don't know technology, such people will be replaced. If you still stick with your old electronics and communication, B.Tech degree or your civil engineering degree, don't think you will get jobs. Okay, people keep telling, I don't have jobs, I don't have jobs. You don't have skills. Understand that. Okay, it's not to insult anyone. We all who did B.Tech or B or any, any degree, we all have simply by-hearted books and somehow passed the exam and came out with a 60%, 70% in the degree. Okay, that is nowhere useful in today's world. Those days there were some jobs, IT jobs and all, everything was booming. Now it's not like that. Now there is competition. The population is high. The youth population is high. So when 10 people apply for a job, both are B.Tech, but one person is very good in coding. One person is very good in communication. His, his personality is better. He will get the job. You cannot blame the government that vacancy is not there. Vacancy is not there. Okay, same like UPSC. UPSC, how much ever you people population increase, you pass out or do whatever, they don't need 1000 IAS officers. Okay, one district, only one IAS officer is required. In full India, there is how many districts? 700 districts are there. So 700 people only they need as an IAS. So you 10,000 people going writing an exam, don't blame the government that increased the vacancy. After increasing the vacancy, what they will do? They cannot put 5-5 IAS officer in one place. So the most skilled person, the most person who has done the hard work, who is studying nicely, who is uh, knowing the syllabus, knowing the previous year papers, who did everything right, the disciplined fashion, he is the one who will pass the exam. Because people keep asking, sir, my handwriting is not good, is it important? Sir, my personality is not good, is it important? Everything is important. You cannot be less skilled than somebody else and then still claim for that same job. Okay, you have to equate to that people. Okay, whether it's veteran student, whether it is any like 10 year preparation, doesn't matter. A fresher also can pass UPSC, provided that you put a one year, two year sincere effort. But nobody does that. Everybody are like, even our channel, WhatsApp channel, I think 1000 people joined the channel. Why did you join? The views of the videos is still 300, 400. Why did you join there if you can't uh, watch our videos? Because you like doing this. Students like doing this. I am part of Telegram channel, I am part of WhatsApp channel. You think some magic will happen. You think, okay, tomorrow onwards, he will send PDFs, he will send notes, he will send this thing. You are already collecting notes after notes. You, you yourself check your phone. Your phone and laptop is full of notes and coaching material. So you have full confidence that you will pass next year. You will not pass. You will pass only if you study, not if you collect materials. 
the sooner you realize this the faster you will clear upsc else you do like a five year plan keep giving exam waste your parents money waste your own money be in tension all the time sacrifice all the games and this thing fund and all and claim that you are studying which ideally you are not studying okay this and all will sound harsh and these things coaching class won't tell you coaching class likes to tell you you are doing great you are awesome or oh, next week one more test is there take that test also pay another 999 you will give you one more test also they will keep doing this coaching business is going to flourish and boom the entire life you are the ones who will again again join this year this coaching next year that coaching then take a five year plan then take a three year coaching degree plus ias coaching what all you are doing be serious you will get job not serious you will waste your parents money and wait waste your future also okay so ai india is going to host two things one is the first ever global summit on artificial intelligence this october okay that is the first ever summit it's happening and also india is the chair of global partnership on artificial intelligence gapi and that also india is hosting okay this year india you know many things we are hosting i think 2024 starting we'll again host uh, this uh, uh, i think quad or something is coming okay so quad is coming i think because brics is already over so this is over so maybe quad uh, thing is going to happen so like that uh, many things we are going to host or maybe bricks also I, I am not sure okay so we will be hosting a lot of things our voice is being heard so ai is something where the full world is now trying to achieve something so there india has a good chance and we should not miss the opportunity same glory which we brought through g20 we should bring through the ai also that is what the author is suggesting so here AI can add a 500 like billion dollar to India's economy by 2025, accounting for 10 percentage of a country's GDP. So this can be your opening line when you write an answer on India and AI. Okay, Prime Minister Modi also has told about global framework on ethical expansion of AI. Meaning AI should not just expand, but ethical expansion. Meaning it should not be misused. Proper regulation should be there. Uh, children, women, everybody should be protected from this digital uh, things and all. So many many things are there. Okay, so. India has an opportunity to set an example for the global south. The global south countries already Africa. Everybody has been voicing a lot uh, in praise of India. So in AI's field also, you should start getting that same praise. Okay, so one area where India can do good is protecting children and adolescents and women because we already have done excellent things when it comes to women and child within our country, whether it is maternity leave. Okay, it's one of the longest maternity leave in the full world now in India. Okay, uh, second, I think in order, but one of the longest. Then we have child rights, okay, the in the Factory Act and these kind of things where Child Labor Act, okay, where the age of the people, uh, children who can work in this thing that has been regulated. So many things for children and women, we have already proven excellent schemes. So in AI also, if we can bring something, a very good sense, a very good uh, 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 declaration, and then we make everybody the global people pass, then we will be again ap ap applauded by the world. Okay, so that is what the author is suggesting. So. AI is not designed for children, but children are the ones actually using them more. Okay, like your parents may not be using too much, but the children are actually making these uh, pictures and apps and everything. Okay, so that is why we should regulate it. Regulation will align incentives to reduce issues of addiction, mental health and overall safety. Okay, so this data hungry AI based digital service, meaning without data, they can't function. As I told chat GPT and these things are functioning because too much data they have. Okay about the same topic they have that much access to data that any question you ask they are able to pick it quickly and then give it to you in the answer format so that data hungry thing may do some opaque algorithm meaning which is not transparent so the dark patterns will come dark patterns also i have taught you so this will exploit the young people okay who can be easily they are vulnerable they can easily like they will click this link for extra this thing click that link so you will do that and your data your phone images everything will be taken you post a lot of things in social media people will take all of this meaning the ones behind the AI, they will take all of this. So, this AI has many negative things like misinformation, radicalization, cyberbullying, sexual grooming and doxing. Okay, doxing is a term like leaking your private information. Again, you have your photos, your uh, personal information with which you can, meaning your location, your identity, how it can be understood by other person. Such items when you leak it, that is called doxing. Okay, that's a term you can use in your exam. So, Author is telling enthusiastic sharents, meaning for parents, he is calling sharents because the parents are sharing everything right from the time a child is born. You are taking photo, his growth, he is walking, he is dancing, he is eating that. Your child's complete journey, most of the parents' complete journey is there in social media now because we are the ones who are becoming parents now, our age, so our, our generation. So our next generation child, everything we are putting on the social media. Okay, even our photos that much won't be there in social media, but our uh, even kid or if it's our pet, these things are the ones which are mostly there in the social media. Media. So these things and all can be misused. Okay, it can be misused by people, and then uh, unlimited unintended consequences can come out. 
okay deep fake capabilities of this ai can do something wrong it can target 10 people the bad creators can do morphed sexually explicit depiction and dispute distribute them online also so overall we need regulation that is the main point so india is again more sensitive because in india is a country okay you feel bad or good india is a like very sensitive people okay meaning for no reason people will tell you hurt my sentiments okay it can be caste it can be religion it can be gender it can be this thing everywhere this problem is there but india is a very diverse country that there are million thousand reasons for hurting you okay any silly thing which we consider very light thing you will see that that has caused one person to kill someone or one person to like go and burn his house or something happens for a very silly thing which for you it will be silly but for that person it is very very big thing it can be party basis it can be it, it depends on state like in kerala it is not religion hindu muslim fight it is actually party fight okay the cpm congress bjp they are fighting party wise in some other states it's like hindu muslim fight other places it will be like black and white kind of racism fight or it will be high caste and low caste fight in india there is reasons unlimited reason for people to fight so everybody who is involving in this are actually brainless that we can't do anything so at least we as upsc aspirants or upsc field teachers and all we should not go into this we should at least try to see that people around our circle our vicinity at least they are not going into these traps you cannot change the full country and full these things like you see in movies and all okay don't have that kind of ambitions your circle at least you keep it clean okay then things will slowly slowly improve so this is the uh, problem in india so ai regulation must improve upon india's approach to children under india's newly minted data protection law we have a data privacy law data protection law which after many years of debate it has passed so that in that also ai also should be properly regulated and then uh, the parents which has the burden of uh, looking the child's interest and all for them some safety measures should be given okay like to check how much hours the child is looking this thing or maybe you be able to erase some data something you should be able to check. parents should have some control okay and in india or in the world the dynamics you should understand that like your parents and all google pay and phone pay and all you would have taught them I mean, actually the children is teaching the parents not the parents teaching the children like how to use netflix how to use this thing smart tv remote gaming this and all child learns first actually and not the parents so there also one challenge is there if it is parents teaching something to child then you can regulate when parents don't know anything child is the one teaching the parents then how will the parent regulate it so that challenge is there keeping that in mind you have to see like how our upcoming digital india act and all new act which it come it will protect the children's interest when interacting with ai so we should follow international best practices which i will teach you now which is the main part of this article internationally unicef has guidelines okay nine requirements of child centered ai they are telling india is also signatory of the un convention on the rights of child so they have given nine pointers or nine things which you can use in your exam also like what all you should keep in mind children's well-being children's inclusion fairness and non-discrimination data privacy children's safety transparency explainability accountability empower governments with knowledge of ai and child rights prepare children for present and future ai create enabling environment so this if you see it's like one word one word only but these are the nine points which you should keep in mind while doing any rule for ai okay child ai child interaction with ai so this is something united nations gave same like that california's one thing is very good uh, law they have age appropriate design code act okay which now author is telling india also should do something like india age appropriate design code act meaning as per your age you should give that much transparency that much access so that kind of some uh, laws are there okay so it uses clear age appropriate language for user information so in the internet i found this do's and don'ts under that california age act so using data about kids in ways that harm them or uh, which they didn't ask permission so these are all the companies must stop here companies must start okay like the two things have been given so this you can note down this is not there in today's hindu okay tracking kids location unwantedly you should not track the kids location or collecting unnecessary personal data about the kids then tricking kids with dark patterns okay dark pattern is again i taught you in another session different different uh, click baits kind of thing and all which you make and uh, uh, take the child to your side that things and all should not be done then company must assess how they use the kids data before the uh, products cause harm meaning you collect data fine but how you will use that data then set default settings to the most private level and provide all privacy notices in clear languages meaning children should be able to understand not like you give your big terms and conditions and all and they won't understand it it should be simple for children's use make it easy for kids to report any privacy issues also then let kids know that they are being monitored or tracked meaning when you choose location or this thing anything you should know it's not like you by default check box or everything should be on so these are the important things about california thing and india also should do that indian authority should collect evidence and uh, do things here it will be written yeah india age appropriate design code this should be your baseline you can refer california you can refer united nations and you can do this okay through regular dialogue with children help incorporate 
proper things which will benefit them meaning no threat against uh, ai and all you should uh, defy, devise something in australia also they are telling there is an australia online safety youth advisory council which comprises people between the age of 13 to 24 so that if you go and study also that will be a good interesting approach okay so you can use all this in your thing while telling like a suggestion for what india can do as a way forward okay so the fa this line also you can use the fast evolving nature of ai means that the regulation should avoid prescriptions and instead embrace the standards strong institutions and best practices which imbue openness trust accountability so in one line they told everything what is the nature of ai what we should not do what we should do what we should keep in mind everything in one line came so that line it can be your opening line or your conclusion line okay so it will establish our thought leadership on global ai regulation the interest of our young citizen must be the front and center meaning whenever you do ai related something child should be the center of thing okay center of uh, uh, con uh, concern with that only you should do the things so that is the full article I have discussed three articles in detail. So these things are all anything now UPSC asks, no matter what. Okay, because people keep telling, give me question answer. Question answer if I teach you, you will simply by heart that question answer. Any other format the question comes, you cannot write. That's why I am teaching you the topic itself 360 degree. So that no matter how they ask it now, you can write it. Okay, whether it's advantage, whether it's disadvantage, what is the comparison between global or India? What is the future? What is the past? Everything you can write by just my one video. Okay, so try to watch daily. Enroll to my test series also because it's guarantee that you will pass if you study through the videos and the test. Okay, it's like sure shot. So tell me in comment section if you need any more changes and things and all, I will try to do it. And Instagram, I told you, I put all these videos of Canada people speaking, USA people speaking, that videos and all because of copyright issue, I cannot put in YouTube. So such things I put in Instagram. Okay, so you can watch there. I'll wind up now. Thank you and have a nice day.